after five years of tracking my calories and macros pretty consistently and generally always being aware of my caloric consumption, I had an entire 30 days of zero tracking, zero weighing, zero macros. And I wanna share with you what happened. Hi you guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. My name is April. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutritionist and I'm very excited to bring this video to you guys because this 30 days of no tracking kind of challenge happened accidentally and it was something I didn't even realize I could learn so much from and of course I want to share with you my learnings. This will also be tailored to women five foot four and shorter as all of the content on this channel is in terms of health and fitness. And if you love this idea, if you're someone who struggles with counting calories right now, if you feel like it's too strict, if you feel, feel like you struggle with restriction or binge eating or just some mindset challenges around tracking and you're scared you can't achieve your weight loss or body recomposition goals without it, I encourage you to watch this video because I'm gonna have some amazing tips for you having just gone through this over the last month myself. And if you love this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content tailored to petite women and let's get into it. So this will be a blend of a little bit of what I've learned through my certifications and also my personal experience because I'm taking you guys on this health journey with me as I have been the last four years or so and it always continues to evolve even if you feel like you've kind of done everything a bunch of times. So here's what happened. Little story time. You guys know I just moved from New York City to Austin, Texas and I moved at the very end of July. At the end of July, sorry June, June. I don't even know what day it is. At the end of June, I got on a plane and did not fly to Austin. I flew to Indianapolis to go to a wedding. And that weekend I went to the wedding and then following that weekend, I got on a plane and went to Austin. So I went from New York, moved out to a wedding, straight to Austin, and then I had my first full month in Austin. So as you can imagine, going to a wedding, I did not have access to, you know, regular things I have at home that I'm used to food scale, the ability to track, even just the time or the interest to track. And normally that would be fine. You know, the last five years I have been great at tracking, but I always would take, you know, if I was at a wedding, I would be able to eat intuitively or eat because I have the experience and education to know how to do that. So I went to the wedding thinking, no big deal. It's just like any other weekend. I don't feel the need to track all the time. I haven't for ever in my life really. So I was just, I just thought it was gonna be the weekend. I was like, go to the weekend, I'll do the thing. And then I'll go to Austin. I'll get re back, reset up with my, you know, all my things, get my kitchen together and it'll be back on track. I get back from the wedding moving into Austin and I didn't get to move into my home right away because my stuff was on a moving truck for two and a half weeks. So I lived somewhere else for two and a half weeks waiting for my stuff to come and still didn't have my stuff, still didn't really feel set up enough, wasn't really cooking that much at home to be able to do that. So as a result, I went two and a half weeks more without tracking my macros or really knowing how many calories I was eating in a day. Now, a lot of things I noticed went through my head in that first week. I was thinking, oh man, this has been, this has been a long time since I haven't tracked a single thing in the My Macros app, not even just like a meal or something or outlined what I'm gonna eat or done any planning, which I like to do just to feel good. I started to think, you know, the fear crept in. I was like, what if I gain weight? What if I don't get enough protein? What if I overindulge? What if I don't even know that I'm overeating all of these things, right? I started to worry when it got to the two and a half week point also, I hadn't weighed myself. I was like, what if this just like I, all my fitness goals go out the window and I'm like, I've, I mess up or something, right? I had, everyone has these thoughts, even trainers, even coaches. So that was creeping in, that self-talk was creeping in. And about two and a half weeks in, I decided to weigh myself. This had been two and a half weeks of eating intuitively, which we're gonna get into. I stepped on the scale and I was about three pounds lighter than what I had been at home. Now, you guys may or may not know in my journey, my best average weight is 115. I, when I started a weight loss journey, like years ago, um, I did, I lost 10 pounds. I was like 125 dropped down to like 115 and I've fluctuated between 113, 115. But the last year I've solidly been like 115 to 118. It's, that's been more my normal. So to step on the scale and see 112 after two and a half weeks of not trying to lose weight was unusual for me. And my weight's very 
consistent usually based on you know the types of food i'm eating so obviously i had a feeling of relief i had a feeling of oh like i've been doing a good job i mean i know how to eat intuitively i know what my body needs but i actually really did it naturally without stressing or worrying about it or restricting anything over the last two and a half weeks so naturally when i moved into my actual home which i'm in now and i got all my stuff i thought you know maybe we just keep this going. Like this is feeling good for some reason for this time of my life. I feel confident in my body. My workouts feel good. I feel satiated and I haven't given up anything. I was eating dessert. I was eating out like four nights a week. I was still drinking alcohol, maybe one to two times a week, sometimes more depending, you know, trying to create a new social life in Austin and whatever. So I was like, let's just keep going. Like I'm feeling good. And maybe this is just a new chapter for me. So I just went the rest of the month and now it has been 30 days. I have not counted a single calorie macro and I want to share what I've learned that has been a good experience and why I think I probably won't go back to it for a while. First of all, I was kind of forced into this situation. Now I already had, I'm a very strong believer and there's a lot of evidence around this that in order to eat intuitively, you do need to already know how to eat. It doesn't, we're just, we don't just pop out of the womb knowing how to put together a PFF meal. You know what I'm saying? Protein, fats, and fibrous carbs. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So I went into this, I was kind of forced into the situation of, okay, I don't have my scale or anything. So I just need to do a really good job of remembering how I feel after I eat one of my portioned meals and trying to match that feeling after I eat out without tracking. So beginning at the wedding, even literally the dinner that night or the next morning breakfast, I, as I was eating, I was eating slowly. I was doing all the things that are really, you know, important to being present with your food, eating slowly, enjoying it, chewing your food. I thought about, okay, I know I also teach intuitive eating. I teach a lot of this in our program, uh, Petite Power Premium, and to our girls, we teach a blend of macro and intuitive because macro is not sustainable to do your whole life. And even when I was tracking regularly, I was not tracking every single day. I would do like every other day or once a week or something. So it's just, you gotta find the right balance. But in this scenario, I started imagining, okay, I'm eating this food. I know that it's first of all balanced properly because I have a protein, I have a fat and a fibrous carb in this meal. And we're, like I said, we'll get to that. But second of all, what do I feel hunger wise as I'm eating it? Now I know exactly how I feel after finishing eating one of my macro meals because I've done it for five years. I know how full I should feel after a meal to know I met my needs and I don't need any more, but I got enough. Okay, that is that does take practice and that's why calorie counting and macros can be really useful when you don't have any prior experience with portions or understanding your nutrition. But after many years of learning what that satiety feels like, I was able to kind of recall it while I was eating intuitively and try to match that hunger level. That was a really great observation that I made and something you can use too if you've spent a couple days or a couple weeks tracking your macros and you've hit your portions, you can try to replicate that exact feeling when you're eating food intuitively. It it typically feels like you're about 70 to 80 percent full on your you know your tank like if you are filling up your stomach like it's a gas tank you stop around 75 to 80 and the thing is one big thing i learned here is that i didn't really know my true fullness until like 10 to 20 minutes after the end of a meal so i would definitely as i was getting to the end of the meal i would slow down even more let my brain catch up and you know, see if I'm still hungry. Cause a lot of times we wanna just keep eating, but it hasn't actually gotten down into your digestive tract far enough to know that, oh, I'm full, I'm satiated. So trying to match what you know feels right based on the macros you've learned in the past with how you're intuitive e intuitively eating is a really great tool for understanding what your, your natural hunger cues are or your natural fullness and it's a way to tailor it to you um so that's a that was a really great observation you can totally use this and practice this yourself a second thing that really surprised me is that eating things in moderation was actually easier not harder i used to think that you know if i didn't track very calorically dense foods like peanut butter and whatnot that I'd probably overeat them. And as it turns out, I haven't found myself overeating or binge eating, which you guys know I str I've struggled with in the past and I've shared about a little bit. I haven't binge ate a single thing since I stopped tracking, which did surprise me. I thought I'd have some kind of moment where I'd wanna overindulge, but the truth is I've been so keyed into feeling not stuffed and not starving all the time that I just haven't been interested in food that much. I just haven't 
wanted to overindulge, having a bite of something sweet or two or three has been more than enough. And I think it might be a little bit linked to the fact that when I take a bite, now that I'm eating intuitively, I know that I can have more if I want. It's not been weighed out and I don't have to look at it and say, this is all that I'm having. It's like, well, I could have one, another one if I want, if I feel like I need it or I'm still hungry or I'm not satisfied. So there's been a little bit more of that surprise around, oh, this food is, you know, not a limited quantity. I can indulge if I want, of course, though, I don't really want to because it doesn't feel good. So that has been a really cool, unexpected thing too. Now, something that definitely helped with this whole process is because I was unsure how much I was really eating and I was eating out at dinners, like my family came and visited me in Austin and we went out to all of the, you know, like barbecue and, you know, fried food, like foods I wouldn't typically eat. I was kind of worried. I was like, I'm probably overeating. I'm probably eating foods I wouldn't normally eat. And so I made an effort to move more and not a lot more. I honestly just did more walking. And because it's literally 105 degrees here in Austin, that for me looked like at the end of my day, going to the gym and getting on a treadmill where there's AC and just walking at a, like literally nothing intense about this. Didn't even break a sweat. And I would just walk for like however long I wanted and I'd bring my Kindle. So I would read at the end of the day or in the beginning of the day and walk and make sure my steps still got pretty high because in New York my steps were always above 10,000 or 8 to 10 8 to 12 in that range and here it's because I have a car I don't walk as much so maintaining that movement was really really key I think in being able to still have the calories I want to have eat more as a petite woman which is really important um, but also stay active and help offset that a little bit help keep your metabolism going so just stay you know being able to move a little bit more and enjoying that movement it really was I paired it with the reading which made it fun helps a lot in, you know, feeling like you're making good use of the calories and just staying active in general. Of course, I was still lifting, but probably only about three to three days a week during this, three to four days a week during this month. Okay, this next part's really important because I'm gonna teach you with a diagram exactly how I built my plates up so that I knew I would be satiated and satisfied and be able to still have my calories be appropriate for my body size and activity level. So in addition to the things I said earlier about trying to match your fullness cues that you already knew from your macros, um, this is how I filled my plate. So pen should be <laughs> clicked for this. Here's my plate. Oh my gosh, this pen is not very, okay. Here's my plate. I guess I can't draw a perfect circle. No career in that for me. Okay, so I'm gonna divide it by about, I'd say this much. This is our little pie chart. And look at my nails, aren't they cute? Okay, anyways, distracted. This is the plate, okay? So when I filled my plate, you can do this at a restaurant, you can do this anywhere you want. I was aiming to eat PFF balanced meals, meaning protein, fats, and fibrous carbs. But I specifically want to talk about the carbohydrates that I chose this month out of precaution that I was afraid I was going to gain weight, not tracking for a month. And like I said, I lost about three to five pounds. And I think it was a combination of everything, but this played a huge role. I was really proactive and very conscientious about this nutritional tip. First of all, you guys know my favorite protein was in every single meal. Okay. So it take, took up a good amount of the plate for petite women. You want to aim for about 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal, about the size of your palm should take up your plate. So I always made sure whatever I was eating, I was eating out that the protein, the fish, the tofu, the chicken, the steak, whatever it is, that had to be on the plate. I didn't want to just eat a whole plate full of carbohydrates for the night or the day wouldn't make me feel good, wouldn't keep me satiated. Now, if you're eating out, you also don't need, really need to add in your healthy fats because it's cooked in a lot more fat. Olive oil is a healthy fat, restaurants use a lot. So I don't usually recommend if you're eating out a lot to try to add in extra fats. It's probably in naturally because chefs cook with it a lot. So that leaves us with what do we do with these other two portions? So what I opted to do is in this one, I ate fibrous carbs. Okay, fibrous carbs, what do I mean by that? Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that keeps you 
full. It is a more voluminous usually because it's like fruits and vegetables. So it's going to keep take up a lot of volume in your stomach. And it's also uh, has more micronutrients, has more nutrients in general and fiber is not digested like starchy carbs are in your digestive tract. It just helps bulk up everything. It helps you improve your digestion and the, it is not broken down into sugars um, like starchy carbs are. And this left a small portion to go to my starchy carbs. And this is exactly what I did without even really realizing it just because I, this is how I eat normally, but um, I had to, you know, kind of, be more conscientious of when I was consuming these type of carbohydrates and um, these type of carbohydrates, your breads and your pastas and your, um, you know, rice cakes and rice and the, kind of the really satisfying foods. I made sure that they were always in the meals so that I enjoyed myself. Desserts, I had dessert every night. I've been having ice cream sandwiches. It was really great. Um, I made sure they were still in the meals, but took up the smallest portion on the plate. Now, this is a great way to achieve the balance that you want to have to be able to eat more intuitively. Of course, um, you need to make sure that you get enough fiber to keep you full and enough protein to keep you full as well and to help you maintain your muscle and build more muscle. Um, now, I want to talk about what is an example of fiber and what is an example of starches so that you guys have an idea. So the fiber, like I said, it's fruits and vegetables. It's all of the fruits you can imagine, berries, apples, um, celery, it's vegetables like red pepper. It's anything frozen too, like frozen grapes. You can have, you know, squash, your eggplant, it's beans, zucchini, bananas and plums, um, cabbage, oranges, sprouts, kale, there's scallions, pickles. These are fiber, more fibrous forward carbohydrates. Now your starches, like I said, these are pastas, these are oatmeals, these are um, cereals, they are potatoes and applesauce. It's saltines and baked potatoes, corn, sweet potato fries, you know, any type of whole wheat pasta, whatever it is, rice, quinoa, um, whole wheat bread, English muffins, that type of thing. So even if I had starchy carbs, I just made sure that most of my plate was more fiber forward carbs. So not cutting out carbs, no point do I ever want you to cut carbs out. Just make them higher fiber carbs and less starchy carbs with the exception of your workout. So I always have a good amount of simple or starchy carbs around my workouts and that's because they are high form of energy they are broken down um, into your bloodstream as sugars that you can immediately use for energy and fuel and so having that bagel after a workout or before a workout is great will help you work out better more efficiently and so this was typically more of like a lunch and a dinner and my breakfast would have more starches and proteins so this is essentially like a how to get lean video without counting your calories and macros as well for petite women. It's really going to come down to being intentional about how you construct your plate and your satiating cues. How full are you? Remember your starches, those starchy, simple carbs, starchy and simple carbs. Those are the most satisfying and the least satiating. If you want to set yourself up for success, you need to have the most satiating foods and a little bit of the satisfying foods so that you don't feel deprived, but you mostly want to be strategic here. And this is going to help you so much, whether you are still tracking or you're trying to get into tracking or you're eating intuitively as petite. And I also just want to say, if you do not have any experience tracking, I absolutely recommend doing it, using it as an education tool so that you can learn about all your foods, what is a protein, what's a fat, what's a fiber, what is a starch, you know, tracking our calories is a great educational tool. So these are all tools. It's just about how we use them. And of course we're all in different journeys in different parts of our journeys. And so as you go through your health journey, you learn new parts and you can kind of sprinkle them in depending on what your goals are and the lifestyle you want to live. So as of right now, I have no plans to go back to tracking calories or macros, which sounds crazy. And I'm loving how I feel in my body, feeling really lean. Um, you know, being 112 pounds is light for me. Uh, I'm 5'1", so it's a normal weight. It's actually, you know, I have a lot of muscle, so it's quite a bit heavier than some people who are 5'1". Um, but my body fat percentage is still 16%, which is the lower end of a high-performance female athlete. Normal body fat percentage for women would be above 20, 
percent, twenty percent is even considered an athlete. So I still feel really strong. I'm still feeling powerful. I feel full, satiated, and I'm enjoying my lifestyle right now, just like I was when I was tracking. Both were just kind of different, and I guess I'm just in a new journey here in Austin, and I'm excited to take you guys along. So let me know if you have any questions about intuitive eating. I don't even like that term because you guys saw maybe my last video I made on intuitive eating. I'll put it in the description or put it up here in a card. I'm not a fan of the idea of just being able to eat without any education. I don't think that's realistic. I think we need to teach ourselves. We need to know. We need to try things out. And if you guys have any questions about what this month has been like for me, drop it below, I will answer. I'm very happy with my results, which I wasn't even trying to do. And I'm excited to keep enjoying this lifestyle and learning more and sharing as I go. All right, you guys, please give us a like to support my channel and I will see you next week. Bye.